Occam's razor is a scientific and philosophical rule stating that entities should not be multiplied unnecessarily, or in other words, a principle purporting that the simplest of competing theories is preferred to the more complex. Occam's razor suggests that explanations of unknown phenomena be sought first in terms of known quantities, without adding any extraneous postulations, assumptions, or conclusions. When applied to the current hot-button topic of the flat versus globe-earth cosmologies, Occam's razor, time and again, applies to only one side of this debate, whilst the other is constantly found multiplying entities unnecessarily in defense of their theory. In the geocentric level Earth cosmology, the horizontal horizon always rises to the eye level of the observer and remains perfectly flat 360 degrees around regardless of altitude, because the Earth itself is a flat, level, horizontal plane exactly as it appears. In the heliocentric globe Earth cosmology, however, the horizon isn't horizontal, but eventually starts to bend doesn't always rise to eye level, but eventually falls below it, and doesn't remain perfectly flat 360 degrees around the observer, but instead curves 360 degrees around itself into a sphere. The former is what everyone actually experiences, as all amateur high-altitude footage filmed without a fisheye lens shows a perfectly flat horizon rising with the camera as high as we can reach over 120,000 feet high. The latter, however, is what is claimed by NASA and other space agencies, reinforced by their CGI artist renderings, fisheye lens photography, and a very select group of government employees known as astronauts. Occam's razor would suggest that, without sufficient evidence of a curving horizon bending 360 degrees around itself into a magical floating ball, Concluding such a cosmology would be found guilty of multiplying entities unnecessarily. The same applies for Earth's apparent complete lack of motion. In the geocentric level Earth cosmology, the Earth is stationary and immovable, while the sun, moon, and stars all move over and around us, exactly as it appears to everyone who has ever lived. In the heliocentric globe Earth cosmology, however, the Earth only looks and feels motionless, but is allegedly spinning around its own axis at 1,039 miles per hour, while simultaneously orbiting around the Sun at 66,600 miles per hour, while the entire solar system spirals 500,000 miles per hour around the Milky Way galaxy, which itself is supposedly shooting millions of miles per hour more away from an inexplicable creationary explosion at the beginning of all space and time. None of these alleged motions have ever been proven, and instead have been repeatedly falsified with experiments such as the Michelson-Morley, Michelson-Gale, Sagnac, and Aries failure. Occam's razor would suggest that without sufficient evidence that Earth is undergoing these four extremely fast, contradictory, and nowhere apparent motions, that concluding such a cosmology would again be favoring unfounded complexity and multiplying entities unnecessarily. Another example is the practical and demonstrable use of spirit levels to measure and build perfectly flat, horizontal structures over great distances. In the geocentric level Earth cosmology, the Earth, the horizon, the oceans, and the liquids in a spirit level all lay horizontal and flat exactly as they appear. In the heliocentric globe Earth cosmology, however, the very definition of level is redefined from being points of equal heights across a given expanse to being points of equal distance away from a given global center point. The former definition is what all engineers, surveyors, and builders accept and understand, as it is both common sense and been in common practice for millennia. The latter definition is one espoused by theoretical astronomers who simply assume a global center point, then boldly assert that level means curved. Occam's razor would again suggest that adding such unnecessary and unevidenced assumptions to the practical, demonstrable definition of level is unfounded. Similarly, 
everyone knows and understands innately the directions of up and down, as being towards the heavens and towards the earth. In the globe cosmology, however, up and down are redefined as being relative concepts, with up being away from the global center point and down being towards the global center point. In such a fantastical model, a man at the North Pole can dig a hole downwards into the earth only to eventually mysteriously find himself digging upwards and then popping out at the South Pole. In such an unintuitive model, which way would this man be facing when he popped out of his hole? Would his legs come out first, or his head? If you say his legs, how could he possibly be digging upwards while upside down standing on his head? And if you say his head would come out first, then when and how did he manage to flip 180 degrees in his hole? Occam's razor would suggest that until such a man has done such a thing, it is unwise to make such assumptions. Yet another example is the alleged size of the sun, moon, and stars. In the geocentric level earth cosmology, the sun and moon are equal-sized, equidistant luminaries, just as they appear. In the heliocentric globe earth cosmology, however, the sun is allegedly 400 times larger than the moon, but also 400 times farther away which makes them only seem the same size. In reality, nobody has ever traveled to the sun to prove such a claim, and until they do, Occam's razor would suggest not assuming such a thing. It is the same with the stars. Everyone can see clearly with their own eyes that the sun is bigger than all the stars. But yet, theoretical astronomers say the exact opposite, that the stars are all bigger than the sun. Again, in reality, Nobody has ever traveled to a single one of these stars, but we are still taught in school and told by astronomical authorities that they are all much larger and much farther away than the sun. Occam's razor would suggest, at the very least, we need to travel to one of these stars before making such extraneous assumptions. Two more examples are the heliocentric theories of gravity and relativity. In the geocentric level earth cosmology, the force of buoyancy causes objects to rise or fall based on their relative density to the medium surrounding. Helium balloons rise up because they are lighter than the oxygen, nitrogen, and other elements in the atmosphere around them, while most other things fall down because they are denser. In the heliocentric globe cosmology, however, an alleged force existing in all things causes smaller masses to be attracted to larger ones, and so, rather than falling down because they're heavier than air, things are being attracted to the densest nearby object, i.e. the Earth, and helium balloons are mysterious, inexplicable, heathen, anti-gravity devices. Globe apologists will often claim buoyant force is somehow dependent on their theory of gravity for its operation, but Occam's razor would disagree. Objects rising or falling until reaching density equilibrium with the medium surrounding cannot be shown to be dependent on Isaac Newton's post hoc theory of mass attraction, and attempting to do so is just adding unevidenced complexity and multiplying entities unnecessarily. Finally, one of the most egregious examples is Einstein's theory of relativity. In the geocentric level Earth cosmology, the Earth is motionless, just as it appears, while the Sun, Moon, and stars all revolve over and around us, just as they appear. In the heliocentric globe cosmology, everything in the cosmos, including the Earth itself, is constantly moving, and so without any stationary object in existence acting as a control, all motion is claimed relative and not absolute. Einstein gives the example of two trains moving in opposing directions. It is often difficult to tell if one train is at rest while the other moves, or vice versa. This thought experiment, known as special relativity, single-handedly and without any evidence or experimentation, caused the masses to accept the unsatisfying premise that humanity is impotent to discern whether or not we are moving. In reality, however, after a few moments, it is easy to discern whether our train is moving or another train is moving. 
there are slight bumps in the ride and parallax in distant observations. On Earth, we never experience any bumps, and the sun, moon, and stars have all remained in their exact same patterns and constellations throughout the entirety of recorded history. Occam's razor would suggest that until there's any real evidence to the contrary, our common sense and lived experience of an absolutely motionless Earth is not just some relative phenomenon. William of Ockham would probably roll in his grave if he knew about the spurious theories of Isaac Newton and Albert Einstein, or the misguided assumptions and conclusions the masses have accepted in their wake. Thankfully, his solid philosophical principle, known as Occam's Razor, has stood the test of time, pointing towards truth, even when stubborn servants of scientism refuse to renege.